everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk, and I'm very, 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 very happy to be back. We're gonna do an episode on California Red Zinfandels. We haven't attacked this grape in a little while, and more importantly, I've had a couple people asking for a few of the specific ones. So Todd from uh, New England, we are going to do the Carol Shelton, as I promised. Um, Four really interesting Zinfandels, all rated very highly, all in that $20 and above range. So this is not a value-driven episode. I mean, this is where the big boys play, This is, which is something I like about Zinfandel. You know, red Zinfandels are very intriguing wines. They're starting to get hotter. Another reason I did this episode, you might remember about 50 to 100 episodes ago, I, I talked about how red Zinfandels were not quite as hot as they used to be. Well, we're starting to see a resurgence. I think the alcohol levels are coming down a little bit and consumption's coming up a little bit. I think everybody got a little out of hand there in the late 90s with the uh, 17% alcohol fruit bombs. But, um, you know, I I've seen a big resurgence of late and I, and, I, and I find it very intriguing and interesting that they stayed between about 20 and $30 for all the top Zinfandels out there, excluding you know some of the Turleys and Martinellis and a couple other guys. Most of the big boys play in that twenty to thirty dollar range, and you can't say that for a lot of categories of wine. And so that I find is intriguing and interesting. A couple things I want to do. I want to give a shout out to the Florida Gators who won the NCAA tournament. Uh, I had a couple people ask me to do that, so I've done it. They've actually won every major tournament. It feels like I mean they won the you know the college football championship. Basketball two times in a row. I mean, you know, they're winning the hockey championship. Ping pong, I heard they won as well. A little ballet, a little equestrian stuff. I mean, I'm not sure if they've lost an NCAA championship. So Florida right now is title town. Um, and uh, it's a quite amazing accomplishment. I had Ohio State winning the entire tournament, so I was upset. But good job by Florida. Lurkers, I'm calling you out today. You know, it's been a long time since I've gotten on your case, and I gotta be honest with you, for lack of a better word, you're crushing my soul and my heart, my happiness and the structure of my foundation of my life. Can you please come to the table and leave me a comment? I keep looking at the data. I'm a data whore. I like the data. I'm looking at the data. All these visitors, I'm saying to myself, wow, only 150 comments. Where are these people? So, please don't be bashful. Don't be shy. Jump in. We won't bite. Please say hello. In this episode, it'll mean a lot to me. Maybe you'll give me the energy to continue to do the show. Let's get to the wines. Wine number one, the Terraces 2004 Napa Valley Zimpendel, 14%, 14.8% alcohol, 93 points, Connoisseur's Guide of Wine, which is a very nice little publication, 22 bones, 93 points is really bringing the thunder. Terraces is a long time Zimpendel producer, as a matter of fact, if I go all the way back in my memory bank when I was 14 and dusting the shelves at the old Shoppers Discount Liquors, and that's a fun fact right now. Right now, First person that puts into the comments, Shoppers Discount Liquors, gets a free wine library bag. So obviously you gotta be watching the episode, and now I know you just pressed pause and you answered, but first person to put Shoppers Discount Liquors gets a free wine library bag. If you get it, I will, uh, I will, uh, ask you for your email, and uh, we'll get this away to your home for free. Because I'm a good guy, I'm kind of like Santa Claus, you know? Let's move on. If I go back into my mind about shoppers, discount liquors, Terraces might be the first Zinfandel I remember being on a shelf. Not Ravenswood, not Ridge, not all these other ones, but I just remember the Terraces. So let's give it a whirl. Really nice color. Very intriguing, a lot of citrus flavors going on in the nose. I, I get a really profound uh, orange peel on the nose. I'm also getting a, a wild, zesty uh, fig aspect. You know, like a great fresh fig that you get from the farmer's market. Also a heavy dose of a, a licorice, uh, yeah, like a, a licorice spearmint kind of a candy shop, but not the fruit candies, more of the herbal candies. Not that kind of herbal candies. Actually smells a little like Ricola. It's got a little bit of that going on as well. Quite intriguing. Coming up off a little bit too hot for me for sure, right off bat. The alcohol is not as structured as I'd like to see it. 
It's got some really nice black currant flavors coming through, blackberry jam coming through. Again, that fig element and a little bit of that real pure reduction sauce of ricola is coming through on the flavor, which is nice. Um, it's, it's finishing short and a little awkward. It's not really doing it for me. I think Connoisseur Guide, which is a great, great magazine. I'm a big fan of them. They do a good job in California. I think they're off base here. 93 points is way, way too high. I'm gonna go a little bit more in, in, in the structure of 88 points. It's a solid bottle of Zinfandel at 22 bones. Throw up the double deuces. I'm gonna pass, cut it out, you're out. I'm just not feeling this wine. I mean, again, 88 points is a nice wine, but it's just not changing my life. Four vines. 2004, Ducey Vineyard. 24 US dollars, 91 points, wine spectator. These uh, grapes are dry farmed, which is nice to see. You know, nice you know, process to do for Zinfandel, I think. Um, more importantly, uh, Four Vines has been coming on very strong lately. I'm really impressed with they, what they've been doing over the last couple years. When I first tasted their wines about five, six, seven years ago, I found them to be really underwhelming efforts. They've really come on. Some of their higher end stuff has been really impressive. 49% alcohol, and let's give it a whirl. Now you're waking up on Saturday morning, all geared up to watch the Smurfs, and your mom's made those kick butt pancakes with the blueberry syrup on them, and they just go down like butter, because you put a ton of butter on them. That's kind of what this wine makes me think of right off the bat. It is a polished, profound, pure red Zinfandel. It's got great fruit. Wonderful strawberry jam flavors coming through. I get a little bit of a cedar box as well. Um, really interesting pepper notes. A little dark black pepper coming through. Skipping around with those strawberries. Really nice. Holding hands actually with the strawberry, which is really impressive. Um, again, the polish is what really, really uh, it stuns me. And again, going to that Saturday morning breakfast, you know, it's just it's the purity uh, of the fruit, and just it just slides down your palate, almost like a beautiful warm pancake. Um, great nose, it's bringing the thunder on the nose, great, great, again, strawberry flavored, kind of almost like a, it reminds me of a strawberry flavored uh, alcoholic beverage for some reason, you know, kind of like a, a spiked punch at your, you know, 10th grade dance. And so, you know, it kind of, it kind of goes with that angle. One more time, just for kicks and giggles. This is what Zinfandel's all about. No heat whatsoever, the fruit is overpowering it, there's great structure. Almost like a cactus juice flavor on the finish, which is really interesting. This is a nice bottle of wine. Real, real good, actually. Nice wine. Sometimes it's fun to smell the glass after you pour out the wine, because you're actually able to get a little bit of the residual um, you know, nose from the wine, give you a little bit more of an angle on it. Now, a couple other things I want to mention. A, a very great, great American passed away last night. His name is Eddie Robinson. If you don't know who he is, uh, you should definitely uh, seek that out. He was the 55-year head coach of Grambling State. And he is uh, a great guy. I just remember being young, watching that Grambling State game every you know year on Saturday. And it was just, you know, he was a fixture. And he was a, a great man. And somebody that's really under the radar, one of the great men growing up in the, and, and being in the South and with all the racial tension down there and he was just a profound guy and, and um, he passed away at the age of 88 last night and, and I wanted to give him a big shout out. He you know, was a great American, for lack of a better word. Carol Shelton, 2004 Zinfandel and what gets really interesting about this is this comes from Rock Pile and uh, that is a, a great, great vineyard, 14.5 percent alcohol, 90 points Robert Parker, 28 bucks. Now Carol Shelton is the uh, winemaker and co-owner. She is a, a, a big time winemaker, highly, highly respected, and I'm really downright excited about having this wine in the shop. Great color again, probably the darkest of the bunch. Really, really dark, dark colors, I mean dark.
Now we talked about the strawberries holding hands with the pepper. Now let's move it up a bunch and now we're getting into the blueberries dating the black pepper. This is not sixth grade anymore now. This is full-fledged dating, you know, third date, the whole nine. You know, this is the blueberries dating the black pepper. That's what's going on in this news. Tons of black pepper, pure. I mean the real pepper and the ch 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 and your salad and it's the real stuff not in the jar or the packet, whatever that junk is. I'm talking real grinded black deep pepper. Um, really coming through wonderfully. Beautiful blueberry flavor coming through as well. Reminds me a little bit of like the blueberry cereals that I've had in the past. A little bit of artificial aspect going on in there, but really, really intriguing. Really smells decadent, if I can use that. And that's the kind of feel I get when I smell this. And you saw a little shoulder came in, so I'm clearly getting excited. Great darkness, great darkness of flavors, meaning like a, a like a dark chocolate mixed with a little bit of blueberry jam. Finish goes on for a little while. Gets a little more red fruit on the finish. I'm getting a little bit more of a, almost like a red, you know, like a cassis, like a curry, red curry, you know, kind of flavor coming through. Uh, currant, excuse me, not curry. A little red currant. Um, a little flabby in the mid palate, the transition from the grape flavors, the nose, the grape flavors, and then to the finish, that little, there was a little pause there, almost like a big letdown in the third quarter and they had a race back to win it in the fourth quarter. For that reason, I'm gonna score this wine 90 points. I think it's exceptional. It has a chance to be a classic if that gap gets closed. Maybe over time, it's a young baby, it's an 04 Zen. Um, we're talking about a wine that is a 14.5 alcohol and, and, and feels that way, it's very polished. It's almost got Bordeaux-like tendencies. Again, some, lots of New World fruit. These Zins are a lot of fun. This is party in your mouth time. This is not to be overanalyzed or professor hat time. Don't give me a thesis on Red Zinfandel. Red Zin is Lionel Richie, flip it upside down, you're dancing on the ceiling. It's just to have a good time. These wines are very fruity, very fantastic, really exciting. You know, again, this is a wine that should be enjoyed by itself sometimes if you're really looking to have a good time, you know what I mean, with the high alcohol contents, or with things that really go well with fruit bomb wines, and those are foods that stand up. One of my favorite all-time pairings is, is a rabbit and cherry reduction sauce with red Zinfandel. And for me, it's a great pairing. I know a lot of people don't do that, but for me, it's a classic, and, and this wine kind of feels like that way. Uh, reminds me of something I'd like to have with a rabbit, so it raced through my mind, um, and you know, Bugs likes a little Zinfandel, so you know it's it's no big deal. It's 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 just the way I think you should pair them up. Now, again, at the end of the day, there this is a, you know Carol Shelton is a phenomenal winemaker and should be highly respected. And uh, and uh, I'm excited about trying more of her efforts. It's a solid effort. It's a 90 point wine. It just didn't go all the way there. Segacio, 2004 Cortina. Zinfandel, this is one of their single vineyard Zinfandels, and this is 28 US dollars, and this has scored 92 points by Robert Parker, so I'm extremely excited about trying this. And again, this is a 15.3% alcohol fruit bomb, so let's see what's going on here. Let's give it a whirl. Good to be back. Missed yesterday's day off. I hope you missed me a whole lot, or maybe not too much, but lurkers, I didn't forget about you. Another big thing, I think it's time for somebody to, you know, bring some more people on board. I know a lot of people recommend Wine Library TV. I get a lot of those kind of emails, but you know what? I want to give something away from somebody who does that. So, the first person that gets somebody to comment for the first time and refer to them as the person that showed them WLTV gets this bag. So I'm giving away two. Nice little bag, a little $10 value. For what? To tell a friend about the coolest show on the internet? You do that, they put your name. If they don't, you're out. No rules, don't email me and cry, or threaten me, or you're gonna get me, no. Person has to leave a comment, like hey, cool show, or hey, this show sucks, but my friend Johnny John, or Dumb Phase told me to do this, or Leather Palette told me to do this. Whatever your name is, if I see that person, you're gonna get the bag. You wanna give it to that person? You wanna split it? Maybe you can give them the corkscrew out of it. I don't know, that's up to you. But that first person gets the bag. Giving away stuff today. Feeling a little Oprah-esque. Let's give it a whirl. Now this wine is not fooling around in the nose. Geez. This is almost a, this is what I like to call a laughable nose. I mean this wine 
has so much fruit. I mean, not only are we skating on the rainbow of the Skittles, I mean, we're kind of almost like landing at the end and we didn't find a pot of gold. No, we just fell awkwardly and the entire rainbow of flavor exploded into our face. And we caught some, and some of the rainbow even got up our nose. And that's what's going on with this wine. I mean, this is bringing a hoopla of flavor. I'm getting all sorts of erratic different flavors like apricot, mango, very intriguing different kinds of noses coming through for a wine that's a Zimbandel. I'm almost even get, I have to say it, and you know, this is one of those things, you know, and this is, you should really, you know, you trust your nose, here it comes, and that's pretty ironic because I knew these wines would have big bouquets. I'm gonna trust my nose and I'm not scared. This wine smells a little bit like banana. So, let's give it a whirl. Old world. Hey, old world peeps, you're gonna have to leave. I mean, this is an absolute new world. So new world, it's like if the internet was a country, you know, America wouldn't be the new world anymore, anymore. the internet would be. This is like internet new world fruit bomb. An explosion of raspberry jam coming through your entire palate. Still coating, I'm still tasting it. However, where is everything else? I mean, this is an absolute mouth coater, but a little bit lacking in the structure. However, for the second time, moreover, let's go with that. Moreover, there is more structure than your normal wine that I get upset about that's fake, fruit bomb, even Australia we talk about a lot of times. Um, maybe it's just a level of, hold on, Maybe this wine is just darn too delicious. One of those kind of things. You know, it's tough to analyze on its own merits. It's a little too fruitified, and a little too sugarified, and a little too happyfied for me. Uh, I'm going to score this wine 89 plus points, and it's getting about 89 and a half plus points just on delicious factor. Again, it is so delicious. It is a fruit bomb. There is a billion people who would love this wine. However, you're looking for a little bit more structure, any kind of terroir flavors at all, terroir true to its area. I mean, let's go with any kind of earthy flavors or any kind of, you know, structure nose. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have, it's the difference between a bull running through a china shop and a 74 year old polished woman who's an antiquer for 73 years walking through a china or antique shop. That's the difference. And on the bull is me sitting. I'm riding the bull through the shop and throwing dodgeballs at all the finest stuff in the place. That's the difference between this wine and a lot of wines. This is just a roller coaster ride. It almost isn't wine. I mean, it's wine. Question of the day. Been thinking about this a lot lately. Lady. I've been thinking about this lady a lot lately. Lizzie, my wife, of course. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. How do you manage your inventory, your seller? Do you use a website? Do you uh, use Excel? Do you use your noggin? Do you uh, make symbols and corks and throw them on your ceiling and they stay there and then you're like, oh, I have six bottles of that. Whatever you do, I want to know about it because, and you know where I'm going, you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, aren't we?